In this lecture, we're going to learn another useful library, which is Redux Saga. So what is the use of this library? This library manages the Redux side effect. Redux Saga is similar to Redux Thunk, but there are some difference between both these libraries. If you want me to make a tutorial on it, you can just comment me below. Redux Sagas are implemented using generator functions. We all know to create a generator in JavaScript, we first specify the function keyword followed by the asterisk that defines the generator function. Generators are functions that can be exit and later be re-entered. The generator function body is executed until the first yield expression, which specifies the value to be returned from the iterator. So let me show you a very simple example to understand how to work with Redux Saga in the Redux application. So I'm going to open a new tab and inside it, I'm going to head on to reduxsaga.js.org. And from this website, you can get the Redux Saga library. So just click on this get started and install the Redux Saga in your project. So I'm going to back to my project and open my terminal, stop the development server, clear the screen. And here I'm going to say npm install Redux Saga. Let me install this library inside my project. Now, once I install it, let me clear the screen and start my development server again. Let me just back to my previous example and show you how you can work with Redux Saga. So to understand Redux Saga, you need to first back to your store and inside it, you need to first import the create saga middleware. So at the top, here, you just need to first import create saga middleware from Redux Saga. I'm going to call create saga middleware. So from the Redux Saga library, I'm going to import create saga middleware. So once I import this function, just down here, before this create store at the top, I'm going to create the saga middleware. So to do that, you just need to say here constant and create a simple variable here. So I'm going to just simply specify name to this variable, which is saga middleware is equal to, and you need to call this function, create saga middleware like this. And just for that, you need to just specify this saga middleware inside this apply middleware parenthesis. So let me just copy this saga middleware variable and pass that here. And just after that, you need to run the saga generator. So to do that, just after this create store, make sure you execute the generator after this statement. Once you call your create store, you can run the saga generator. So just down here, I'm going to say saga middleware dot run. I'm going to call the method of saga middleware, which is run. And inside it, I'm going to call my middleware. So to create the saga middleware, I'm going to create a new file for that. So inside this Redux folder right here, I'm going to create a new file and name this sagas.js and inside this file i'm going to create a middleware so to create a middleware function you just need to first start with the function keyword and pass asterisk to it because we are going to create a generator saga library work with generators so i'm going to create here a generator and specify name to it i'm going to specify name watch increment async that's upon you you can name anything to this function let me just pass here export statement and use this function inside my store like this. Let me first import this file at the top. So here I'm going to say import in the curl braces. I'm going to say watch increment sync from and specify my file path. Just out of that, I'm going to save this file back to my Sarkas file. Inside this file, let me create my action creator. So at the top here, I'm going to say action creator. And just up here, I'm going to create a function. So I'm going to say here function and as you know, this is the generator. So I'm going to pass asterisk here and pass a name to it. I'm going to say here increment a sync. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add here say timeout function to make some delay. So at the top here, I'm going to say constant delay is equal to call here a function like this with parameter ms means millisecond. And then I'm going to say here new promise. I'm going to return a promise object with this function and I'm going to say here response promise is going to take a response as a parameter. So I'm going to say here response set timeout and inside this set timeout, I'm going to pass response and millisecond just out of that here inside this increment, I'm going to pass yield delay and I'm going to pass millisecond here to thousand. So this, so this statement will execute this function after two seconds. 
this yield keyword is used in JavaScript to pause and resume the generator function. So once the generator executes this function after two seconds, it will call its second statement. So just after this first statement, I'm going to call here my second statement. So I'm going to say here yield and here I'm going to call the saga effect. In saga, there are some effects you can use when working with saga library. So at the top, I'm going to say import in the curly braces. I'm going to say put specify comma and say here take every from in the single quote. I'm going to say redux saga. From the redux saga, I'm going to get both these effects from the effect directory. So I'm going to pass here redux saga effect. And then I'm going to pass this put right here. So I'm going to say here put in the parentheses. I'm going to pass my action. So I'm going to say here type and it is a type of increment. Now put is one example of what we call an effect. Effect are plain JavaScript object which contains instruction to be fulfilled by the middleware. When a middleware retrieves the effect yielded by the saga, the saga is pauses until the effect will fulfill. There are different effects in saga. Put is one of them. Just for that, we have here take every effect. I'm going to use that inside this watch increment sync function. So you can notice here, I'm going to have here my action creator. And inside this watch increment sync, I'm going to call this action creator and create a new action. So inside this function, I'm going to say yield take every, I'm going to call an effect of saga. The take every is a helper function provided by Redux Saga to listen for dispatch action and run your action every time. Or you can say and run your action each time. So inside this parenthesis, inside a single code, I'm going to say increment async. I'm going to create here an action increment async and to this action, I'm going to pass action creator increment async. This one. So what I'm going to do is here I'm going to create a new action called increment sync. And now just out of that, I'm going to save all the changes back to my counter and inside it, you can notice here, I have here increment async as a dispatch action creator. Let me get rid of it. And here instead of increment sync, I'm going to say here increment. So I'm going to just simply pass this type increment to this increment method. And as you know, inside my sagas, here I have increment sync action. I'm going to pass that to this action type. So I'm going to just copy this increment async and pass that to this type like this. Let me save this file. When I click on this plus button, you will notice after two seconds, you can notice counter will update its value by one. Let me click on the increase button again. You can notice after two seconds, counter will update its value. So this example is now completely asynchronous. So now whenever you get the value from the API call, you don't have to worry about anything. Your example is now asynchronous. So I hope you understand two different ways to make your Redux application asynchronous. In the previous lecture, we understand how to work with Redux Thunk. And in this lecture, we understand how to work with Redux Saga. So I hope you understand both these lectures clearly. If you want to know more about Redux Saga, comment me below. I will make more videos on it.